What's your name, bro? What's your name? Jay. Jay, Jay question for you. What's your nationality? African American. I, I, I want to say the wrong thing, though, but yeah. No, African American. That's what I expect you to say, right? Come here real quick, because I'm going to ask you a question, and I want to get your full facial expression. Okay. Watch this, Jay. Are right, you can stop right there. Stop right there? Yep. What's up? What's up? Jay, Africa and America. Gotcha. Two different places. Gotcha. How could that be one nation? Bring it out. Did that make sense to you? Oh, I'm African American. Okay. I thought about that. Yeah, you right too. Oh, uh, you know why? You know why you you know why you recited African American? I was told it. Because that's what they told you. Right. It's an AJ. You African American. Hit you upside the head until you remembered it. Until it got to the point where you were just saying it, and it didn't make no sense. Right. How old is your uh, your how old is your father? Uh, 53. I think 53. So he was born 15 plus years before 1984. So was your father African American when he was born? African American wasn't a nationality. I'm gonna help you out. Yeah, as far as he was told. Yeah, it wasn't even a term. Exactly. Right. So how could you be an African American? You know, African American, I'm gonna give you a little history lesson. Africa and America was named after two white men. Africa was named after Leo Scipio Africanus, a white man, the white man who conquered Hannibal in the Second Punic War. Hannibal was an Israelite from the tribe of Asher. Hannibal was an Israelite. The Israelites ruled the world at one point, the blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, all right? God said, one day, y'all gonna lose all that because y'all broke my commandments. I didn't forget about that. So yeah, we rose up in the power, but more prophecies had to come to pass. So therefore, Africa was given that name. Bam, white man. America, who was America named after? Give me Psalms 48 and 11. 49, 48, one of those. 49. America is named after Amerigo Vespucci. Another white man. So, now that we have two white men, can two white men make a black baby? Can two white men make a baby at all? Can two and a, can a white woman and a and a white man make a black baby? It's no black that can come from white at all. They have the recessive gene. White people come from black. You can produce an albino child, right? Yeah, yeah. Can they produce a little black baby? No, you're gonna automatically know that baby is adopted. You see a white baby with a black family? Huh? I don't know because we produce everything. We got the whole color spectrum to choose from, right? So African-American can't be your nationality. You believe in the Bible? No, yes, the same thing, not really. Like, okay. Like growing up in the church, I did it first, but like now that I'm older, I'm like, no. All right, watch this. I'm gonna show you how the Bible is a true book. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 49 and verse 11. Uh -huh. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own name. They do what? They call their lands after their own name. Do every hood now have a Roosevelt? Mm. Bring it out. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, basically. The Roosevelt? Yeah, way, Dude, yeah. all, the, all the states got a Columbus or a Columbia, right? Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. Who's that named after? Christopher Columbus. Columbus. All the, the, the white settlers that was traveling the world, conquering the, the world, they named each land after themselves. Is that did that not happen? You see that the Bible prophesied that would happen thousands of years because the Bible was here before the white man was in rulership, right? Yeah. How do we know that? Because they used the Bible, exactly. so that means it was already here, right? Hmm. So what? They colonized us. They colonized us. You know how they they took the Bible and they they misconstrued the scriptures purposely to deceive us and make us think it was saying something that it wasn't. They was reading Luke and saying the servant that obeyed not his Lord shall be beaten with many stripes. They knew his Lord's will. So our people say, oh, okay, master. They whoop, whoop, whooped us until we either was in Christianity or didn't yeah, believe yeah. the Bible at all. Right, 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 right. Both of those ways are wrong. You understand? Christianity is a man-made religion. You do not read that word one time in the Bible. You, so, but we know there's a God, right? Yeah. We know there's a chosen people, right? Think about it. You got, why are we the best at everything that we do? Sports. We're the best sports, oh, that's musicians, that's Actors, we're the best at everything. You think it's by coincidence, by mother nature, by the trees and the ocean and the stars and the moon? Why is that? Because God created us that way. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Bring it out! I'm going to show you something, bro. I like this. You don't believe in the Bible because you've never been taught the Bible the right way. That's all it is. I'm going to tell you something. According to the, the Bible, is like it's encoded. The Bible is written in code that only a select remnant and group of people will be able to understand it in the last days. According to the Bible, these are God's chosen people. The blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. From Judah on down to Nephthali. Exactly. The black and brown people in the world today. But we know it's Asians are brown. It's browns in Saudi Arabia. They are an Israelites. How do we know who the Israelites are? 
I'm going to show you. But watch this. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Watch out. I'm going to freak your tradition out. Does God love everybody equally? Supposed to. Hope so. He's supposed to. Yeah. That's the tradition. Yeah, right. That's what you was told. Right. God love everybody. Right. And you just took the black man, took that and ran. What did we just read though? Mm. Read that bottom line again. Yeah, Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God just told the Israelites that they above everybody else. Right. Huh. The Israelites, meaning who? The blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. God said these people are above everybody else. That's right. But how? We at the bottom of society, right? We in the scums. Yeah. We in the hood. Yeah. We, in the hood. we smoking and we uh we taking doobies to the face till we pass out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how are we above our people? Something that means over time something happened. Yeah. Something changed. So I mean, at least that is. they told us, I'm gonna tell you, it's not a lie, but I'm gonna tell you what happened. God had an ultimatum with the Israelites. They wasn't just gonna be just ruling the world just just because they have to live by a certain set of standards. Right? And I'm going to show you that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. The Bible is written to the Israelites. This is God's ultimatum. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. I mean, excuse me. 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Okay, so I skip something. The Israelites are in the wilderness leaving. They just left Egypt. Right. You, you heard of the Egyptians before, yeah. right? You heard of King Tut, oh, yeah. Amenhotep, yeah. Nefertiti. Yeah. Powerful people, right? Yeah. Where are they now? People, they did. They did. Where are their kids at? Why they not ruling? Why they didn't inherit the throne? Because usually when you are kings and queens, you die. Yeah. yeah, so where they at? Yeah. Why they got their statues nose chopped off and... The, the dusty and the white people, it's whites and Arabs and white people fighting over the land now. Hey, I heard they uh, cut, the, I mean, like, chopped the nose off of them fence because it was too black. Yeah, but check this out. Yeah. How would they even have the power to do that? Yeah, like how? You know why? The God of this Bible destroyed the Egyptians. The God of Israel destroyed the Egyptians and took the black people that were among them, known as the Israelites, and separated them. Right. He said, hey, come, come serve me. Pharaoh, all them got destroyed. They got drowned in the water and all that. God put 10 plagues on them. He destroyed them. Brought the Israelites out who were a black nation of people and said, I'm going to give y'all laws. Y'all are going to follow them and y'all are going to rule the world. Okay? So this is the ultimatum. He said, if you keep my commandments, you'll be above all people. Watch this, sis. Verse 15. Come on. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Jay, you got any kids? Got one son. You got one son. If your son coming out and say, Daddy, flip you off and start throwing stuff over and destroy, what you going to do? You're going you gonna to whoop him, right? And right. hey, what's wrong with you? You lost your mind? Right. No, nah, I'm saying that's you going to ask him. <laughs> what about you, sis? What you going to do? What you going to do, your kid? You got any kids? No, my, I had a little girl. She ain't here. Okay, so if you got nieces and nephews, yeah. If your niece and nephew come and they come in your house and they disobeying you going against everything you said, what you gonna do to them? You gonna whoop them? Are you gonna be happy with them? I'm gonna be happy, yeah. I'm sorry, are you gonna be I'm happy, happy that they did? No, I'm yeah. not. Exactly. So why is it that we look at God as some um what's that song, clap along, give you feel? What's that for real song? Because I'm happy. Yeah, we y'all we really think that's what God is in heaven doing. God is not always happy. God got angry with his children when they broke his commandments. When you look at the black community, do it not look like somebody is mad at us? Yeah. How did we end up on ships defecating on each other? Slaves, right Slaves at the bottom of bunkers and just sweating and just nasty. How did we end up picking cotton day in and day out? How did we end up um, getting raped and robbed by our slave masters? Even today, shot by police. Exactly, knee on our neck, hands up, don't shoot. What's good? Y'all believe that there's a God, right, sis? Where was God during all that? I'm going to tell you where God was. God was in his throne with his back facing us. Because he gave us his commandments. He gave us his land. He told us he loved us. And we gave him the finger. That's why black people at the bottom of society. We gave God the finger. We gave God the cold shoulder. And said, we want to do this on our own. We got this. We can rap. We can dance. We can cook. 
I think we can do this without them. Look at the sun. We'll just worship that. Give us a calf. We'll just worship that. Give us Christianity. We'll just worship that. God said, no, keep my commandments and live. But the moment we broke God's commandments, what happened to the blacks and Hispanics? Who are the Israelites? Exactly. Watch this. Read. Verse, 15, verse 16. Cursed shall thy be in the city. Any city you go to in the whole world, sis, if you want to find black people, where are you going to go? You going to go to the rich part of that city or the poor part? You going to go to the poor part. You going to go to the... You're going to look at the map and say, where is Roosevelt? <laughs> where is the worst high school at? Where is the slums? Where, what's another street that usually be in the hood? Pike? It's a pike, pike. in every hood. Where is Pike? That's where you know. Where, and where is Martin Luther King? In the hood. You know where to find black people? But you ready to find the rich? Are they going to look like us? No. Oh, from us. What else did God say what happened to the Israelites? Come on. And cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall thou be in the field. So what nation of people do you know that had to pick cotton? What nation do you know that had to pick bananas, tobacco, rice? That's only us. You can't tell me you seen no Arab doing that. You ain't never seen no Chinese man slave in no field. We was getting paid 10 cents a day, if that. Y'all know that wasn't that long ago, right? Your daddy was born in the 60s? That means his parents was alive during, during that. They were, his parents picked. If not his parents, his grandparents did. In the early 1900s, our people were still doing that. 1920s. Guess what, your father, his parents were alive during segregation. Black people were sitting at the top of the movie theater, white people were sitting at the bottom. He was during a time where white people entered the store first, once they done getting their groceries, then your daddy get to go in and get his. True. Damn. Is that not a curse in the city? Hey, you know. They said, we had our, we had our uh, phone lines that's all destroyed, and white people had their phones that work perfectly clear, you can hear everything. Right. Water fountains. Water fountains, we got the water fountains pouring out boo-boo water. But white people, they have the good water. Hey, Flint, hey, think about Michigan right now. Detroit, Mich Detroit Pistons got a brand new arena. Who is that for, white people or black people? That's for the white people that's gonna sit in the skybox. Why is it that the water in Detroit is still not clean? Are you telling me you got a multi-billion dollar arena and the black people in the hood still drinking dirty water? That's a curse on God's people. Come on. Verse 17, curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Tell me, when we get jobs, are we getting paid the good amount or are we getting paid the low amount? But we working 40 hours a week, though. Right. Yeah. Who work at McDonald's, black people or white people? Black. Who work at the bank, black people or white people? White. Mainly white people. So, you working at these places making minimum wage, working 40, 50 hours a week, and they tell you, I'll make you a shift leader. I'll give you an extra 10 cents. Extra 10 cents, but guess what? You gotta open and close the store. For $10.10. Yeah. God said, curse shall be thy basket in our store. Yo, you taking your basket, your wallet to work thinking, I got a new job now, I'm with it now. They made me the shift supervisor. And you still don't got enough money to make ends meet. You still living paycheck to paycheck. You understand? Systematic, they got it all set up to destroy us. God said this will happen to his people. So. Tell me, are we God's chosen people? Not initially, no. Uh, but it's clear, right? Yeah. God said this will happen to his chosen people. Right. Who did this happen to? It happened to us. Sis, who did this happen to? Uh, it happened to us. So who are we? Uh, get up. We God's chosen people. Uh, we are the Israelites. Uh, the so-called African Americans are from the tribe of Judah, according to the Bible. Right. Jamaicans, Benjamin. Uh, Haitians are from the tribe of Levi so on and so forth. And Mexicans from the tribe of Issachar. These nations, these other tribes, suffer the same atrocities as us. When you see somebody working on a building, who you see on top of it? What nation of people? Mexicans. Mexicans. Wow. Building, building, building. Working all day and night. You think they getting paid good for that? No, they got to split all that money with each other and they all live in the same house yeah, or riding in the same car. Right, bro. Right, bro. How did we end up here? Because we broke God's commandments. Right on. Verse 18. Cursed shall be thy fruit of thy body, uh -huh. and curse, excuse me, uh -huh. and the fruit of thy land. Tell me this, who kids you know that's always born with ADHD? Mm. Who, who they always saying got ADD? I'm sorry, little Tashan, he don't participate in class. He don't listen, he always beating with drumsticks on the table. Right. And don't that be, that's us, right? Yeah. From a youth all the way on up, we destroy mentally. 
God said we will be born cursed. So a lot of times our kids born with autism, our kids born with birth defects, they tell you your kid got to stay in the incubator, stay at the hospital for an extra two and three weeks. Why is that? God is cursing us. From the day we born to the day we die, the Israelites have been cursed by God. What's your nationality? What's your nationality according to the Bible? I'm black. Okay, what's your nationality? There's no nation called black. Yeah. Okay. The so-called black Americans are who according to the Bible? Right. The tribe of who? Judah. The tribe of Judah. Give me Jeremiah 14 and 2. Y'all think color is in the Bible? Y'all think race is in the Bible? And she said no. He said no. Mm -mm, that ain't enough. God just got no. dungeons and dragons. Noah's and arcs and floods and rainbows. The Bible is a, is a history book. The Bible is reality. Right. This is our forefathers' history. Watch this. I'm going to show you. Come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 2. Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. Uh -huh. They are black unto the ground. They are what? They are black unto the ground. Whoa. God said the children of Judah, they are black unto the ground. When you look at the ground, under that grass, what color is it? Brown. The deeper you go, the darker it gets, right? That's the tribe of Judah. Right. God formed man from what? With, uh, the, rib the dust of the ground, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ground, so, yeah. so what color was the first man? Bring it out. Brown. He had to be brown. He couldn't have been white because white people can't make black babies. Man. The first man had to be black. God said, I made man in my image. That means God was what color? Get out. That's right. Get the Bible is very simple. But they put a white image on your screen and said, this is the passion of Christ. And you watched it and you said, oh, Jesus, floating through the rainbows, tiptoeing through the tulips. With long hair. That's what we grew up on. That's what we grew up on. Exactly. And guess what? They told you this was Jesus. So if you pull out a gun, who you most likely pointing at? A man that looked like that. You pulling out a dime sack. You giving it to a man that look like this or a man that look like that? Hmm. So what did they do? They did a number on us. They took our nationality, which is the Israelites. They took the image of our Lord and Savior and told us he was white. They took our God and told us he was white and told us you was nothing but a Baptist, Pentecostal, and a Methodist. They told you you ain't got to do nothing to go to heaven. All you got to do is believe on the name. Say hallelujah, thank you, Lord, and you in. That's why little John John, who had ten bodies, he died, and at the first thing at his funeral, they said, Little John John in a better place. Is that biblical? Nah. That ain't biblical. Right. According to the Bible, the children of Judah are black. Right? The children of Israel are black. The Israelites are black. God is black. All right? So the Bible is our history book. Is it starting to make sense now? Watch this. So now that we know the Bible is talking about black people, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. No. Let's see if it get much blacker than this. I'm going to ask you a question. How did black people get to the, the Western Hemisphere? I don't know. Slavery. Slavery. What form of transportation? Ship. A ship. Hmm. You believe that, sis? Yeah. All right. Watch this. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. So the Lord just brought the children of Israel. It said that for real? Yeah. It said that for real. You see that, Jay? But before today, you were like, man, I really can't deal with that Bible. It it's because you never really read it. Yes. You never read the part where it says these black people will go into slavery on ships. Because the word Egypt, that, that's a new word. Egypt wasn't called Egypt when we were there. You understand? Egypt derives from a Greek word that just means slavery or bondage. So God said, I'm going to send the Israelites into slavery with what form of transportation? With ship. With ships. With ships. God didn't say he going to send us with chips. Because we ain't had no food. You know what they fed us? Yeah, they could, could, could fish a little bit. They feed us a little something. We all got to dig for the scraps. Good. All you think on a lot of the pictures, our people were so skinny. God didn't send us with chips. God sent us on ships. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. That's how you know the Bible is real. God said it's going to happen the way I spoke it unto you. Right. Because he knew in the last days we wouldn't believe his words anymore. So God said, I'm going to speak this thing unto you. And when it happens, then you'll know that I'm real. Right? God, this is over 2,000 years old. Yeah. Keep in mind, the Bible was written before slavery happened. Because they had the Bible when they colonized the Hispanics in the 1400s, right? We came over here in the 1600s. 
So before we was even brought over here on ships, that was already in there. It's just Bible prophecy coming to life. Y'all see that? What would happen when we got off those ships? Come on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. God said, when you get off those ships, you will be sold, meaning bought for a price. Yeah. To your what? Unto yeah. your enemies. Unto your enemies. I thought they was our friends, though, y'all. Uh-huh. Master. Uh -huh. Oh, good master. I'm going to obey you. I love you. God, God called them your what, sis? Enemy. Your enemy. But those the same men all women marry now. Mm. Serena Williams, you made yeah, it here, yeah. married a white man. Yep. A lot of our sisters do that. A lot of our brothers do that. Exactly. exactly. Okay, West said, give me some money, marry a heathen. That's what our people do. These are your enemies according to the Bible. Come on. And no man shall buy you. And nobody shall redeem you or get you out of this condition. Because back then, when we but when we got on hard times and became a servant, after a certain amount of time, your brother could buy you back. He can, he can get you out of that condition. You get on your feet. You know, the year of Jubilee, different stuff happened in history where you wouldn't be a slave no more. God said we will be in this slavery until Christ's return. We will be in captivity until Christ's return. That's when your baby born. Here's his social security number. 923-456716. Right there. Your baby is officially property of the United States of America. And the day you decide you want to leave, America, what you got to get? A, pay. a passport. Oh, the day you want to travel the world. Did that not sound like slavery yeah. to you? Yeah. Yeah. But I thought we was free. What because God said if we broke his commandments, this will happen to us. Y'all see this, right? Yeah. According to the Bible, these things happen, right? So that makes us who according to the Bible? I got slaves. Basically slaves. Slaves, but what nation? Slaves. What nationality? Israelites. That makes us the Israelites according yeah. to the Bible. Right. The Israelites are God's chosen people. So with that being said, did God make the black Hispanics and Native Americans to be at the bottom forever? No. It's only for a time. God said the Israelites, they would be in slavery for a time. They would suffer these afflictions, suffer these curses. And in the last days when they clean themselves up, then I'll redeem them. Then I will save them from their captivity. Because you've been taught Jesus was coming to save the world, right? Tell me this. I got a gun at your head, right? Jesus Christ coming to save us. He gonna come save both of us? He gonna come save the gunman and the person that's getting robbed at gunpoint? Do that make sense to you? No. No living sense. So why would he come save the slave and the slave masters? Right. According to the Bible, who is salvation for? Give me that. Who is salvation for? You've been taught that Jesus and God so loved the world that whoever call on his name and believe on him shall get the kingdom. Is that biblical? No. It's a false doctrine that you've been taught. Let's see who salvation is for. Acts, Acts 5. Or where you at? Matthew 15? Read that. Oh, excuse me. Yes, sir. Acts 5 31. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ was sent for who? The house of Israel. So Christ was only sent for the Israelites. It would probably be in our best interest to find out who they are. Because if you're not Israelite, then he didn't come for you. Right. Why is that you go to a church and everybody in there, all nations can be there? No. Something not adding up. The Israelites, God shows them people, you know who they are because they in the slums. You know who they are because they went to slavery on ships. You know who they are because they had to pick cotton. You know who they are because their kids are born to curses. They're given the worst jobs. With that being said, who are we? Israelites. Who are we? Israelites. We are the Israelites. That's right. That's right. What does God require of us? Why does it matter? Because we can say we're Israelite all day. Yeah. Just like people wake up and say they Muslim all day. It don't do nothing. Yeah. They wake up and say they Baptist all day. Oh, I'm an Egyptologist now. What'd that do for you? What did Egyptology do for us? What did Egypt do for us outside of make us slave with brick and mortar day in and day out? Hmm. Let's see. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? Since what'd you say your name was? Keisha, Keisha, it's time for us to start reading some requirements. Requirements, Jay. It's something required of the Israelites. It ain't just, I'm going to be an Israelite and that's it. No. If something is required, do you have a choice? No. Do you have free will? No. Because that's a lot of our people. I got free will. I do what I do. And we all go to heaven. You got to go? Yeah, because my brother coming. I want to make sure everything. I'm going to make it real. I'm going to make it quick, okay? Just give me one more second. Okay. God got requirements of the Israelites. Meaning there's deals. It's, it's uh, deals with no option. If you break that deal, you just die. Right. right? 
So going to heaven, you gotta follow this deal. If these are the requirements to go to heaven. All right, read. But to fear the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Read. To keep the commandments of the Lord. So we require to keep God's commandments. So if you fear somebody, are you going to do something that's going to make them mad? No. Are you going to do like you got a bully at school, you're going to make sure to do whatever you can to tread lightly. Right. That's what you're going to do. Yep. Go to uh, Sirach 17, 26. You're going to do whatever you can to stay on that person's good side. These people right here, the blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, y'all think we on God's good side right now? Now we on this bad side. So it's time to get on God's good side. Right? This the same God that destroyed the whole world and saved eight people. This the same God that took Lot and his daughters, that killed his wife, took his daughters, and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and those cities that was full of wickedness. This the same Jesus. Y'all know that, right? It's the same God and Jesus that's going to destroy Wrightsville for its wickedness. Going to destroy New Orleans. Going to destroy Memphis for the wickedness that's been going on in the world. Us as the Israelites, we have to come back to God so that we don't get destroyed with it. You want to be the Noah of your generation. You want to be the lot of your generation. You want God to see a difference between you and the rest of the people. The only way to do that is by coming back to his commandments. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 17 and verse 26. Turn again to the Most High. Verse 25. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity. This is what it's time for us to do. Come out of our sin. Repent. Do you know what sin is according to the Bible? Does it mean fall in short? What is what is sin? Basically doing something bad and then... I want to say redemption afterwards, but not for really, no. Let's get sin. 1 John 3 and 4. It's right there. The book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law. So when you break God's laws, you are in sin. Come on. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the breaking of God's law. Chapter 2 and verse 3. The book of, I mean, excuse me. 1 John 2 and verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Uh -huh. And he that saith, I know him, and keep not his commandments, is a liar. If you say you know God and you don't keep his commandments, you a liar. 1 John 5 and 3. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. Come on. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. If you love God, are you going to break his commandments? No. no. Come on. And his commandments are not grieving. 1 John 3 and 9. First John chapter 3 and verse 9. Uh -huh. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Y'all notice all them scriptures was in the New Testament. Keep God's commandments, come out of your sin. You don't know God if you don't keep the commandments. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs>